Friday, Saturday, well, what's the difference? What's the difference? So, we're here to respond to whatever the fuck the guy's name was, I don't remember, but he's a good person. Uh, we'll put the link to his video in the description again, in case you still haven't seen it, you're living under a fucking rock. Uh, Alright, so we're gonna respond. He made a video answering our question as to why Daniel Bryan is good. And, um, valiant effort, courageous effort. Thank you for trying, but we're not satisfied at all. So the first re he gave three reasons why. The first reason was that he's over. Uh, um, that's kind of the point. Why we don't like we don't get why he's over. Being over inherently doesn't make you good. You see what we're saying here. And honestly, if you take away the yes chant, I mean, when he comes out, it's not like back in the day when the glass would shatter and Austin would come out and everyone would just go lose their shit. With Brian, he gets a nice pop. But then it doesn't really start until he starts doing the stupid yes chant. So I don't want to say, like, it's just a chant, but that's definitely a big part of it. <clears throat> he, he's saying he's over is not a reason why he's good. Our big question is, why is he over? Yeah, I don't get it. Because he's done I'm, nothing. I'm, we're not denying that he's the darling of the... The universe! The universe. The WWE universe right WWE. now. WWE! I just don't get why. I mean, we're, we want change. We're, we're sick of the status quo, too. But I'm just wondering why they've latched on to this guy. Because he's done nothing to get to that point. Cesaro, all three members of the S.H.I.E.L.D. are much more deserving of it. I don't get why he's the one that everyone loves, but so Being over doesn't mean that you're good. It means that drooling mongoloids and good people like you <laughs> tend to like him for some reason. I don't know. Number two, his wrestling skills. Yeah, I just don't agree with oh. that. He said that they're probably restricting his moves, because if you watch clips of him from Ring of Honor, he did cool things. Which he did, but I watched a bunch of those. There's nothing there that is restricted in, in WWE. There's no pile drivers or big head moves. like He does German suplexes a lot. Some high-flying moves that Seth Rollins does. I don't see why they would restrict that. And even if they are, can't you come up with something more entertaining to do than kicks if you're this great talent? Because literally, all he does nowadays is kicks. And but they're not even realistic looking kicks. That thing when the guy's on his knees and he does like the repeat kicks to like his chest, it looks so fake. And you, you say to him, <laughs> does it really mean he can't wrestle if all he does is kicks? Well, well yeah. Well, yeah. <laughs> do something else. <laughs> If you're this great legendary wrestler with this amazing move set, if they're restricting you and you're a WWE talent, best wrestler in the world, I'm sure you can come up with something entertaining. And I'm sure that they're restricting Seth Rollins too. Yeah, look what Rollins is doing. He does awesome shit. Brian doesn't do things that make me go, "Oh my god, that was awesome." Yeah, and you, like in your video, you said he was a good wrestler, but you never said why. You just said he's one of the best wrestlers in the company. But you you just you just said that. And I, mean, say why. Uh, I mean, is it his aerial moves that make him the best? No, I think Seth Rollins. He does is a diving that. headbutt. Anyone can. Is do it that. his technical wrestling mm -hmm. skills? Um, Glorified no, wrestling. I think Jack Swagger is a much better. He's an actual college wrestler. Hell, Brock Lesnar was an actual college wrestler. He can out wrestle Daniel Bryan. And let me just. Is say it his power moves? I don't think so. So I don't know what area of his move set. That people are latching onto that makes them say he's the best. I don't get it. And he may have been super awesome, fantastical in Ring of Honor. And but saying that that makes him good in WWE when he's doing nothing makes so you hip, it makes you hypocritical for booing Batista for being boring now when back in the day he was entertaining. Like, I can go well, Batista's the best wrestler because back in the day he was really cool. And it's the same stupid argument. Cesaro was in Ring of Honor as well. And he's here now, and he does awesome shit. So yeah, I just don't see why he's a good wrestler in WWE. And number three, he can pull off any gimmick and still look good. Mm, I don't agree. Uh, he, he's been a, a, a bitch. I thought that was funny. He's been a hug-it-out guy with, with Kane. Nice mid-card storyline, I guess. And he's been a goat. What is he now? He's the GOAT. I mean, don't tell me he's like the badass Austin of the era, because he, it's just it's a joke. And you said that he was he was funny in, in Team Hell No, and <clears throat> I, I hurt myself when I heard you say that, because Team Hell No made me want to kill myself. 
Um, I don't even know how to adequately respond to that without insulting, and I really don't want to because you're, you're a nice guy. But, you see, the thing is, he hasn't... He hasn't been given, like, a wide array of gimmicks to work with. He's been a jobber, and then he was a creepy weirdo, and now he's a guy with a beard. He's never really had a gimmick, per se. And you brought up the point that when he was in the Wyatts, people still loved him. That wasn't because they're like, oh, wow, he's really doing this Wyatt thing. It was like People hated the fact that he was in the Wyatts. They liked him because we don't know. We still don't know. So, yeah. He's the IWC Flavor of the Month. It's just a really long month. Like, Punk's Flavor of the Month was about a year. <clears throat> I still say once Daniel Bryan wins the belt and the chase is over and he has to survive solely on being entertaining in the ring, it's, it's done. It is done. Just like Punk couldn't draw for shit once he got the belt. Don't you remember they did that thing with Punk or he was the champion... And then Brian was the world heavyweight champion, and Zack Ryder was the U.S. champion, and they all came out, and they were like, oh, look at this, it's change. And then nobody wanted to watch that. Nobody wanted to buy any pay-per-views anymore. And then a month later, Cena was the champion, and Sheamus was the other champion. And they are fighting The Rock at WrestleMania. Right, so... <sighs> Thank you for at least yeah, attempting. trying to answer the question. You're brave. Because no one else dared stand up to the I guess like my, my biggest complaint is the whole he's a good wrestler aspect. I, because I, don't, I, don't, I don't see it. Even if you like that indie style, Cesaro and Seth Rollins are both better than him. It's clearly obvious. You know, I just don't see where this whole persona and aura around him has come from. Don't forget about the over argument. Like, Daniel Bryan has never done something in the ring that's really made me go, wow, that was awesome. Like, Seth Rollins... Recently, I've been going, oh shit, that was awesome. Cesaro, and he dead weight lifts someone into a gut wrench. I'm like, wow, that's fucking awesome. I don't get that from Daniel Bryan. And remember, Luke Harper did the flying goat, and it looked cooler. Remember, Paul Burchill <clears throat> was really over at one point. Paul Burchill. <laughs> remember that, people. Alright, so this weekend, we're going to upload another funny video. It's going to be... What would happen if the Three Stooges, Michael Cole, Jerry Lawler, and JBL... Hal Heimer. ...called the 1998 King of the Ring Hell in a Cell between Mankind and The Undertaker? So that'll be uploaded this weekend. Monday we'll have our Raw review up as usual. So until then... Call Cody, Cody Rhodes. Rhodes.